I don't know what made me think about this this morning, but when I was in the the metro station, I saw an ad, and it reminded me of the most humiliating day in my life. I'll tell you about it in a moment. So I'll give you a little backstory about this most humiliating day in my life. I was in my 20s and I don't think I had any children yet. This was before my firstborn son. We're riding through Washington DC. I'm on my way to the YouTube studio in New York. Had my I don't think I had any children at this point. No, I didn't. I didn't have any children. I was married in New York City, maybe about 21, 22 years old and years young and my main concern at that time was making money because my mother at the time and my father, well, not my mother at the time, my mother's not on the planet anymore, but my mother, um, she did not allow me to go to college. She was like, you're not going to college. Isn't this scenery so beautiful? She's like, you're not going to college. And that was the Jehovah's Witness way. So I didn't go to college. So it was always somewhat of a struggle to find some kind of work. And back then they had administrative work, right? Secret secretarial work. We could work as a secretary. So I took up secretary secretarial science when I was in school. And that was basically to be a secretary. And I came out of school typing like 80 words per minute and writing 120 words per minute in steno, stenography. And it was to, I had those skills so that I could make a living. Well, lo and behold, I got into the office space and I hated it and I didn't want to have a boss so I was looking I was looking for ways to make income to make money right well my mother and my mother's friends they said they, they came up with this grand idea well I don't know if it was a grand idea it was the best idea that they could come up with and the idea that they came up with was get day work day work that's what they called it and I was like, day work. Well, I knew what day work was from when I had grown up with my grandmother. My grandmother didn't do day work. She worked in an office in New York City. She worked for the New York City Board of Education for 30 some odd years. And she retired with a pension and they gave her all the kudos and everything when she when she retired. But I knew what day work was because women around us did day work. This was in the 60s when I was growing up. Day work means you go and you work at a person's house, generally a white person's house, and you clean and cook and take care of their children. So that was considered day work. And you work there for the day. And so I grew up with the concept. I understood what day work was. I just never saw myself as the kind of person that would engage in day work. Not because I thought it, I was too good for it, but because I just never inclined in that direction for whatever reason. You know, I was going in different directions. I loved writing. I loved, you know, hanging out with the witnesses at the time. So anyway, I went ahead and I got this day work job. Okay, so uh, I don't know how I found it. I think I might have found it from... Um, some of my mother's friends because they always knew where to find day work because if a black woman needs to make money she knows that she can go and clean someone's house or take care of their children or cook their meals you know that that was part of our scripting as black women in this country because you could make a living doing any of those things and there were always people to hire you to do those things and not saying that all black women did it, certainly not. And not saying that that's only what black women are about, certainly not. We're about so much more than that. Yeah, that is a part. I don't know if it's a small part or a medium-sized part. I don't know what slice of the pie, you know, what size that slice of the pie is in each black woman's psyche. I do know that it was a slice of the pie in my black woman's psyche. I don't even know if it exists in every black woman's psyche. I certainly can't speak for any black woman but myself. So my, my mother's friends, they got this day job um, appointment for me. And they said, you can go, you know, one day a week. And it was something like 
$50 for the day or $75 for the day. It was some amount of money and they pay you cash and women love that and you go and you just work for the day and you come back home and they pay you at the end of the day and they pay you in cash. So I get on the train, I get up that morning and I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do? And the, the assignment was that I'm going to clean um, this woman's house. So I get on the train, get dressed, you know, with some housework kind of clothes on, not the clothes I would normally wear dressing up or going out. I put on these like um, work clothes because I'm going to go and I'm going to clean this woman's house. So I show up, it's downtown New York City, really, um, really nice building, it was like a condo, and it had an uh, elevator, I remember going up on an elevator, it was a really very nice building, and I knock on the door, ring the doorbell, and this older white woman answers the door. Well, well, well. <laughs> the party's about to start. <laughs> so... I um I go inside and she says, Hey, get hey girl, get on in here and she kinda talked to me in this condescending tone that I didn't quite understand because I had never experienced that before because I grew up in New York City and New York City didn't have all of that Jim Crow stuff that was going on in the South. I had never experienced that before. I had never experienced anybody treating me like a girl. Um so I looked at her and I was a bit baffled but I didn't say much because I was young and she was older and she was my employer for the day and I was there to do a job right so I go inside and she starts listing off what she wants me to do I want you to do this I want you to do that I want you to do that I want you to do that you know like a boss already the hairs on the back of my neck start to stand up like what the hey and I'm about to turn around and walk right back out of here because I don't even understand what's happening right now. <laughs> You've been in a situation and you'd be like, what is happening right now? Like, what just happened? That's how I was. And I said, well, you know what? Someone um, recommended me to come here. I'm going to be on my best behavior like all my mother's friends taught me to do. All my mother, my mother taught me, you know, best behavior all the time. And that it wasn't an option to turn around and walk out the place. That wasn't an option. I said I was going to do a job. They sent me to do the job. The woman took me in on someone else's word. So I did the job. So here I am cleaning, 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 cleaning. And they told me, the ladies that sent me here, my mama's friends, they told me, oh, you'll be done like two or three. So I'm looking forward to it's like eight or nine in the morning when I get there. So I'm looking forward to, you know, being done by two or three. Well, this woman has so much work for me to do. I was working and working and working and working. Two o'clock came by. There was, n I was not done. She was like, oh, no, I want you to do this. And a couple of things were not done to her satisfaction. So she asked me, do them again. And I did them again. And this is what I can say about that day. It was the most humiliating day of my life bar none hands down till now and I'll tell you the spiritual significance of that day the spiritual significance of that day was that I got to taste in my mouth the bitter pill that my grandmothers and great-grandmothers and great-great-grandmothers put in their mouth and chewed on and had to swallow daily. Mm. I, I got I got a taste of it and trust me I needed that taste because the pill was so bitter in my mouth that when I left there that day and she gave me that $50 cash or that $75 cash or whatever it was and she said now I'm gonna see you here back next week girl you be better be one time because I got a lot for you to do like a week later I looked that lady dead in her eye and I wanted to slap her face that's what I wanted to do 
And I looked that lady dead in her eye. And my look said, I will never be back here ever again. And I will never scrub a toilet ever again on my knees with you looking over my shoulder. Never again. You best believe you watching history right now. Because this is the last day that you ever see Valerie doing this. I just looked at her. I just stared her straight in the eye. And I said goodbye. I never went back. And I never did that again. And I never did that work again. And I was never required to do that work again. Oh, but let me tell you something. That pill. I can still taste remnants of it. Because it was in my soul. Because... It was a reminder from my great-grandmothers from the ancestry. Don't forget what we did so you don't have to. And I never forgot. And I will never forget.